In today's video, I'll show you how to get the most out of panoramic mode on the DJI drone series. I'll break down the settings for capturing the images and also how to manually blend the RAW files to make large format photos. This is my fifth tutorial in the series. If you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe. Welcome, thanks for joining me. Today I've ventured further down the Blackwater Estuary to my favourite place in Essex, Tolsbury Wick. The wild weather continues, so I've opted for the Air 3 over the Mini 3 Pro today, but most models have the modes needed for panoramic photos. Let's get airborne and I'll explain each option. Tolsbury really is an amazing place to fly. If you are local or ever visiting Essex, make sure you spend a day here. On the right hand side, press the mode button and scroll down to Pano. We don't need sphere today, so I'll select 180 degrees. Check to see which format is set. I always opt for RAW as it captures a lot more data, but use JPEG if you need to save on space. Exposure is at 0.3 under. I'll just check to make sure I'm happy with that choice. When you have a rough idea of composition, Press the capture button and let the drone do its thing. When shooting in 180 degrees mode, the drone will capture a total of 21 images. The horizon is automatically centered and can't be altered. This isn't the case with the next two options. As with sphere mode, it will be 50% complete when the 21 images are captured. During the processing stage, you can control the direction and gimbal of the drone, but capture options will be locked. Now I'll move the drone to a different angle and select the wide angle option. In this mode, nine images will be captured. As I mentioned before, the horizon does not need to be central in the frame, so experiment to see what works. Lastly, let's try vertical mode. Try to make sure there is something of interest linking the foreground and the background to maximize the effect. Once again, level horizon is not mandatory. A few tips I've discovered using pano mode. Because of changes in the wind, it's always best to capture each shot multiple times to increase the chances of all the photos lining up. The height of the drone can make a huge difference in the final image. Experiment at lower and higher altitudes to see what works best. Don't be afraid to choose a different composition to normal. It could be hard to predict how the final image will look. It would be rude not to take the opportunity to capture a quick sphere shot if you haven't seen my tutorial on this mode, a link will be on the screen at the end of the video. The tide is rising over the marsh, so it would be a good time to land and explain the editing process using Lightroom. Not loads to do in this section today, so I'll keep it brief. I've imported the 21 images from the 180 degree shot. The files will be located in the panorama folder on your SD card. Highlight all the photos using shift left click, then right click, merge, panorama merge. Let Lightroom do its thing. On the right hand side are several options. None of them are needed today, except Apply Auto Settings, which will balance the photo for you. When you are ready, click Merge. 
Because of the number of photos, it will take a while to process. So here is the compiled image. I will make a few balance changes. Let's compare to the version automatically created by the drone. There is greater distortion in the foreground and much of the edges has been cropped out of the frame. Quite often the horizon can be a little wonky due to the wind or the gimbal. If you select crop on the right hand side, you can rotate the image and use the lines to find the right angle. All that's left is to export the photo. Here is a comparison between the automated and manually edited versions. Next is the nine shot wide angle composite. This time, because of the location of the horizon, there is a fisheye effect. Same options available on the right. Click merge. I'll just make a few adjustments and compare to the automated version. The original has a flat horizon with distortions on the edges. The manually processed photo has the fisheye horizon with improved scale around the frame. Under the crop option, it is possible to flatten the horizon somewhat using the distortion tool. Then crop the image to suit. Always worth trying different angles to see what you prefer. Here's a close up of both versions. Lastly is the vertical mode. I'll skip the first part. Here is the composite version and the original. Much wider shot and less distortion throughout. There is a slight warp on the horizon, which once again can be altered with the distortion tool. If you prefer the original, but wish to level the horizon, select the crop tool and rotate the image. Let's look at the final shots. And here are a few I captured previously. If you have made it this far, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Photosphere and time travel tutorials are on the screen now. Take care and I'll catch you on the next one.